Hello viewers today i'll present to you john keats's one of the finest poems the poetry of earth the original name of this poem was on the grasshopper and the cricket now enjoy the presentation John Keats was an English romantic poet. He was one of the main figures of the second generation of romantic poets along with Lord Byron and Percy Bysshe Shelley. Despite his works having been in publication for only 4 years before his death from tuberculosis at the age of 25 John Keats was born 131st October 1795 in Moorgate near city of London in United Kingdom He died at the age of 25 on 23rd February 1821 in his one of the favorite cities rome in italy some famous poems of john keats are ode to a nightingale ode on a grecian urn to autumn la belle dame sans mercy bright star put i wasted first as the word and endymion What is a sonnet? A sonnet is a lyric poem consisting of 14 lines written in iambic pentameter with a definite rhyme scheme with a definite thought structure. Iambic what? Iambic pentameter is the rhythm and meter in which poets and playwrights wrote in elizabethan england it is the meter that keats uses here what is i am a famous quote from william shakespeare's william shakespeare's hamlet to be or not to be look at the uh, foot one to be foot two not or not foot three to be to is unstressed and be is stressed in second foot or is unstressed not is stressed in third foot to is unstressed and be is stressed so when a stressed syllable comes after an unstressed syllable we call that foot or meter an iamb so an unstressed syllable is followed by a stressed syllable in iamb pentameter and i am is the dumb it is the heart beat penta is from the greek for five meter is really the pattern so there are five iams per line quite simply it sounds like this the dumb the dumb the dumb the dumb the dumb it consists of a line of five iambic feet ten syllables five unstressed and five stressed it is the rhythm of human heart beat iambic pentameter an example from sonnet number 18 shall i 
compare the two a summer's day and uh, another example from Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet arise fair sun and kill the ain fierce moon so uh, these are example of iambic pentameter okay petrarchan or italian sonnet in its form keats's poem is a petrarchan or italian sonnet with the rhyme scheme a b b a a b b a c d e c d e iambic pentameter lines run through the entire poem while the octave concentrates on the grasshopper's voice in summer the sestet deals with the cricket song in winter the use of this form can be associated with kitsis belief regarding love and nature and how they are both related to each other according to the poet nature offers love and joy and the human response should correspond that fondness an introduction to the poem the poetry of earth by john keats each a fine piece of sonnet written in december 1816 the poem was inspired by the beauty of nature the most common theme among the romantic poets to be precise the poet here celebrates the poetry of earth the music of nature is omnipresent the two opening lines of the octave and the sestet the poetry of earth is never dead and the poetry of earth is ceasing never say it all kids has introduced two little creatures the grasshopper and the cricket as the original title of the poem suggests to represent the vitality and joyous mood of nature even in the scorching hot of summer and in bleak and bitter cold of winter the sonnet is all about how the grasshopper and the cricket carry on with the endless song of the earth let's read the poem the poetry of earth is never dead when all the birds are faint with the hot sun and hide in cooling trees a voice will run from hedge to hedge about the new mown meat that is the grasshoppers he takes the lead in summer luxury he has never done with his delights for when tired out with fun he rests at is beneath some pleasant weed the poetry of earth is seizing never on a lone winter evening when the frost has wrought a silence from the stove their thrills the cricket's song in warmth increasing ever and seems to one in drowsiness hap lost the grasshoppers among some grassy hills look at the uh, sonnet it has been divided into two parts uh, first eight line is octave and the uh, last six lines uh, is called sestet the first four lines of uh, the octave deals with uh, the summer and the second uh, quatrain four lines of the octave deals with the grasshopper likewise 
the first three lines of the sestet deals with the winter and the last three lines of uh, the sestet deals with the cricket's song now i will going to present to you each slide which will represent one line of the sonnet and the text will appear on the slide a background image will scaffold understanding of the text so be careful and watch minutely the every detail of the background image and don't miss it okay let's start our next slide the first line of the poetry of earth the poetry of earth is never dead look here the birds are singing cheerfully they are carrying the music of nature and it is endless now enjoy the birds song you enjoyed the music of nature now move on to the next slide when all the birds are faint with the hot sun and hide in cooling trees a voice will run now enjoy the voice
hope you enjoyed the music of the grasshopper now move on to the next slide from hedge to hedge about the new moon meet that is the grasshoppers he takes the lead in summer luxury he has never done with his delights for when tired out with fun he rests at ease beneath some pleasant weed the poetry of earth is seizing never on a lone winter evening when the frost has wrought a silence from the stub their swells the cricket's song in warmth increasing ever now enjoy the cricket song hope you enjoyed the cricket song and seems to one in drowsiness hap lost the grasshoppers among some grassy hills now the paraphrase of the poem the poetry of earth is never dead the song of the earth is endless when all the birds are faint with the hot sun when all the singing birds feel tired in hot sun and hide in cooling trees a voice will run and return to sedi branches of the trees a voice will start from hedge to hedge about the new moon maid from bushy fences of freshly cut grassland that is the grasshoppers he takes the lead the voice is of the grasshopper and he starts singing in summer luxury he has never done in the grandeur of summer he never runs out with his delights for when tired out with fun of fun for when he feels tired out with fun he rests at ease beneath some pleasant weed he takes rest under some cozy weed the poetry of earth 
is ceasing never the song of earth is ceaseless on a lone winter evening when the frost in lonely winter evening when frost has wrought a silence from the stop their rails had forced everyone to be silent from the warm stove there comes out a loud voice the cricket's song in warmth increasing ever the cricket's song which increases with the warmth and seems to one in drowsiness hap lost and it reminds someone who is hap asleep and hap awake the grasshoppers among some grassy hills of the song of the grasshopper singing from some grassy hedges now the structure of this poem look at the structure the deep green uh the deep green uh, colored uh, lines are uh, forming the octaves first quatrain and the light green lines are forming uh, the last quatrain of the octave the first quatrain uh, reminds us about the summer the second quatrain reminds us about the grasshopper the last six lines forms uh, form the sestet it has also been divided into two parts the first three lines reminds us of the season winter and the last three lines reminds us of the cricket's song now look at uh, the rhyme scheme of the poem a b b a a b b a c d e c d e i repeat a b b a a b b a c d e c d e the typical rhyme scheme of a petrarchan sonnet now i will discuss uh, about the literary devices used in this poem uh, there are six literary devices used in this poem and uh, they are personification alliteration oxymoron metaphor inversion and enjambment the next slides will discuss about the literary devices enjambment it can be defined as a thought or sense phrase or clause in a line of poetry that does not come to an end at the line break but moves over to the next line for example the third line and hide in cooling trees a voice will run there is no punctuation mark or line break at the end of third line okay uh, it uh, moves over to the next line the fifth line of the sonnet that is the grasshoppers he takes the lead this line also moves over to the next line in summer luxury he has never done which also runs 
or moves over to the next line with his delights for when tired out with fun which also runs or moves over to the next line he rests at ease beneath some pleasant weight now uh the 10th line on a lone winter evening when the frost there is no punctuation mark at the line break uh, this line also moves over to the next line has wrought a silence from the stove their trails the line also moves to the moves over to the next line the cricket song in warmth increasing ever so uh, these are the examples of enjambment okay now move on to the next literary device inversion inversion also known as anastrophe it is a literary technique in which the normal order of words is reversed in order to achieve a particular effect of emphasis the poetry of earth is seizing never seizing has been put before never the normal order uh, of the words seizing and never uh, is uh, reversed and uh, in the 13th uh, line and seems to one in drowsiness hap lost in drowsiness hap lost seems to one hap lost in drowsiness this is an example of inversion the words in drowsiness uh, have been placed before hap lost so these are the examples of inversion now metaphor metaphor is a figure of speech that makes an implicit implied or hidden comparison between two things that are unrelated but which share some common characteristics the poetry of earth is compared to the songs of the grasshopper the poetry of earth is compared to the songs of grasshopper likewise the cricket song is compared to the song of the grasshopper these are the two cases of metaphor used in this poem now move on to the next literary device oxymoron oxymoron is a figure of speech in which two opposite ideas are joined to create an effect the common oxymoron phrase is a combination of an adjective preceded by a noun with contrasting meanings such as cruel kindness or living dead look at the line he rests at is beneath some pleasant weed pleasant weed we generally want to get rid of weeds but in poet's eye it is pleasant so it is an example of oxymoron alliteration alliteration is a literary device that uses the same consonantal sounds at the beginning of words in a sentence or title look at the line from head to hedge about the new moon meet for head to head sound ho and for uh, moon meet sound mo repeats okay and look at the line 
has wrought a silence from the stove their trails sound shaw is repeated here so these are the examples of alliteration now personification personification is a literary device where you give human like qualities to non human elements the poetry of earth is never dead the poetry and the dead these two words uh, poetry has been personified has been attributed the human quality of dying and the next he takes the lead he the grasshopper has been attributed human qualities again he has never done with his delight here also the grasshopper has been attributed human qualities and uh, in the line he rests at ease beneath some pleasant weed here also the grasshopper has been attributed human qualities the next line the frost has wrought a silence here the frost has been attributed human qualities frost has made all of us silent all the earth the earth silent the frost has made the earth silent so these are the examples of personifications used here in this poem now word nest dead cg faint feeling weak and dg and close to losing consciousness cooling trees sedi branches of trees hedge bushy fences or rose new mown meat freshly cut grassland meadows in summer luxury when the sun heats up during the summer the grasshopper appears and takes the lead of keeping the nature alive and keeps singing and hopping from one hedge to the other pleasant weed an unnecessary growth of plant which is charming rot a silence winter has forced the humans as well as animals to remain silent in warmth increasing ever it keeps increasing which makes it feel more comfortable drowsiness the condition of half asleep and half awake he has never done with his delights he joys never come to an end lead men roll at is in comfort a voice will run a sound will move about here the poet suggests that not only the voice but also the movement of the creature also makes music new moon meet freshly cut grassland meadows luxury luxurious pleasure or plentitude fun mirth frolic seizing ending stopping rot mad created forced stop a metal fireplace or any kind of hurt thrills makes a loud noise warmth heat grassy hills hedges covered with grass hope all of you enjoyed the presentation and for now thank you for watching this presentation goodbye